Hey, Fitchy here, back at it again. Today we're going to go over all the mechanisms I used over the last 30 years for uh, cutting and grinding metal. And I got a new addition. I'm moving into the 21st century. Stick around. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to go over here now is um, uh, everything I ever use for cutting. Cutting steel, grinding steel, dressing wells, all that type of stuff. Um, you know, over the years I had a number of different things. The main thing is the grinders um, that I use. I do, here's all the tin snips. I even have an original old set. And these here... I've been sitting in my toolbox now, I'd say 10 years, I'd say now. I hardly ever use them. Use them every now and again. These pair here, I do use them, but not for cutting steel. I use these for trimming up uh, cutting wheels. I'll get into that later. Uh, going way back when, you see a lot of these in uh, sheet metal shops, guys doing dock work and stuff like that. I've seen them for a lot of years. Uh, I never really used them much. Uh, they're just a cool piece because they're old. I like having stuff like that around with old tools. Uh, then they got your left hands and you got your right hand ones. Two different styles, right? Uh, these ones here are earlier ones. I had these ones years ago. Uh, they're a really good one. Uh, they broke on me. So I haven't used them in a long time. But I still hung on them. I don't throw tools out. Uh, but basically you get your right hand ones. Or your left hand ones. And you get right hand ones. Cut with your left Cut much right. Same with these ones here. The reds and your greens, that's how they're identified. Red is uh, left handed, green is right handed, and then usually yellow is straight. Okay. That's how you identify them. But uh, they're uh, something I haven't used in a very long time. I use these ones here, like I said earlier. I use them for cutting up um, uh, cotton wheels, but that's the extent of it. Most of the time, these are just all just collecting dust in my toolbox. Now, a lot of people have asked, you know, say I cut with a grinder or whatnot. Uh, you can cut with a pair of tin snips. Yes, you can. Uh, one of the biggest things that I find uh, with cut with tin snips is uh, controlling your cut, of course. Like you can cut it and cut right through it just as fast as a slider metal. Right? So, and you can cut your edge. Now, the problem I run into is that when I cut my edge of tin, tin metal off, you're squishing the metal together. Okay? So when you're squishing the metal together, you're making this edge, cutting edge, thinner, right? You're rolling the bottom edge, and your and your top edge is rolling off like this here. It's not as thick as the, the grinded edge. I, I knocked the head, the, the slag off of that. This side here is thicker than this side here. Now, also, um, you see a lot of guys cut when they get into really hard particular areas. They end up cutting sometimes. This happens. This is over-exaggerating but well, you end up with this type of thing going on, where you end up with all these little divots. Now you got the metal all these stored. And it's, and it's very hard to get that to go back out of it again when you do that. Now, you're not supposed to cut it like that. You're supposed to cut it just so you're riding the tin snip through it. Just so. Okay? And you see the difference in, in the way I cut it. But every now and again, you'll get into tight corners and you'll have to do that type of thing. And, and there's one of the reasons why I've done it. Now, the biggest reason why I've gone to a grinder... It's very easy to cut. This is 22 gauge metal, I think it is. Very easy to cut with tin snips. You try cutting um, 18 gauge with tin snips. I'll show you. This here is a piece of 18 gauge steel. Okay. Now I'm going to cut it with tin snips. And it's not very easy to cut. These are good, good tin snips. Because these are two man operation or two hand operation, sorry. To cut that. People are saying, you know, oh, why don't you just do that? Put it with tin snips. Now you see how long it took me to cut that.
Now you can actually see it there, the difference. And you can see it was a lot faster with the grinder. But if you look at these two metals now, that's the same piece of metal. This here is cut with the grinder. This is cut with the tin snips. You can see the way this is this is squat together from the tin snips. Because you know when, when you're cutting metal, you're closing in on this here, so you're pushing the two metals tight together. So you're actually like thinning out the metal on the end compared to like the uh, the grind edge right here. A lot of people will um, use slider metals because they can cut it with a tin snip. Uh, one of the reasons why they stay away from heavy steels is because it's harder to cut with the tin snips. Uh, one of the, of the disadvantages of going with uh, slider metals, it's um, harder to weld than it is the heavier stuff. Uh, I always like using a heavier steel. I've, uh, a lot of fellas have asked me. Uh, in a 20 gauge metal car, I like using like an 18 gauge steel because you're going to be grinding it and whatnot. So it's nicer to start off with a heavier gauge steel. I've gotten in the habit now of doing all my metal repairs with 18 gauge. Um, no matter if it's on an import, if it's 24 gauge, whatnot. I just prefer that. I find it a lot easier to uh, get a nice finished patch than it is with a slider metal steel. A lot of people figure as well, we're restoring a car, you should restore the car back and put 22 gauge steel in it. Uh, yeah, okay, fine. But when you get in, you start grinding it all off and finishing it off. That 22 gauge steel that you just put into it is now a 24 gauge steel. So at least with starting off with an 18 gauge steel and you start grinding it down, and you'll bring it down to 20 gauge steel, and you're still uh, better than what you were with the uh, the 24 gauge. Now we're going to go way back. Is the ear chisel with the sheet metal cut off tool for cutting metal? For sheet metal, I've used this a long time ago. I used it when I was cutting up large pieces of steel before I got into the grinders, uh, big time. And then you got the, the air shears, where you get these in electric as well. All the airs are is a little um, a pair of tin snips with, um, that goes by ear. Um, I haven't used this in here. You can see the amount of dirt and dust and everything is on it. Uh, you also got a thing called a nibbler. I never liked the nibblers. They are a cool tool. But uh, they leave an awful mess, and uh, if you ever get them down in your boots, <laughs> them little nibblers are um, a bit of a pain because it leaves little pieces of sharp metal kicking around, and ends up falling all over the place and getting into everything, and they're not comfortable. Also, uh, these, as well as these, uh, got a tendency to wear out the cutting edge. They wears out, the nibbler edges wears out. Um, I just found that like to go out and buy a tool for cutting steel and then have it wear out and then you got to go out, go cut finding blades for these. It just got overwhelming. I did so much metal work. So uh, I very rarely use this now. I use this now chopping up cars. And that's the extent of it. Uh, I don't use this at all. Um, I'd say I used nibblers probably 25 years ago and didn't like them. Some people like them and enjoy them. Uh, I just don't like the whole point that they just cut up little shags of metal and they leave little sharp edges on everything and they're underneath your feet and in your product and whatever and every time you turn around you turn around you're sticking one in your finger so nope I haven't got a nibbler and this is the extent of a shear that I got there's the old air chisel you don't have to get old on me sometimes it don't work this is all this does That'll cut a lot of that and roll back a piece of metal and split it in half. As you can see, it don't have a very nice edge. But I've used this for cutting up sheets. Uh, at, one, at one point I was really good at it, and I could cut a hole in the hood of a car for a hood scoop. <laughs> and there it is. Uh, it's been a lot of years since I've done anything like that. This is the shears. This is the seat. You pull the trigger, that's what happens. That's the extent of what happens then. And this is how that cuts it. Makes a nice clean cut. Uh, it's a nice unit. Great for cutting sheet off, steel off. As much the same setup as the uh, the chisel he uh, head, but um, it's not that easy to cut turns. 
It's great for cutting straight lines, and it's a nice clean edge. I just I just found that the the cutting edges used to wear out on them, and in the case of this one, it's a cheaper one. Uh, it doesn't always work. It needs to be a bit of a nuisance, so I haven't used it in a very long time. But that's the extent of that one. Now this is a real nice little uh, cutting device that I picked up a number of years ago from Pinces Auto. I don't know what they're called. It's a lot like a uh, throat shear, but it uh, it's great for cutting small corners and edges and whatnot, and cutting small, very small pieces. Um, I've I've gone into Princess Auto a few times now, and I have yet to come across it again. I must have this probably, I don't know, five, six years now, or probably longer than that, probably eight, 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 about eight years I got this piece now. I'm going to sit this up now and show you. But there's just what how it's made up of, look. It's just a geared teeth and a cutting edge wheel, look. And this here rides out. And over here, this is all this, it, it looks like something you could simply make. Look. See this here, just goes in and falls into the teeth and turns the wheel. Right. as it rotates around and if you want to go the opposite way just rotate it back this way and grab the wheel and rotate that see very simple setup okay. so all is done i just got it bolted to the bench with a three-quarter knot and bolt uh they go a small piece of scrap steel and you see this got little teeth on it for rotating the wheel that's all it does now rotates the upper wheel you take your piece of metal into it and you just feed it into it the teeth on this grabs the metal like so and you just feed it through and that's it that's the extent of your cut but you can actually cut nice little round edges with it round circles it just cuts it on the bottom lip is all it does and see a nice little round edge. It's a neat little tool. Great for cut. I found it great for cutting, uh, like if you're doing a antenna hole or door handles, if you're shaving door handles and you want to make patches to weld in the holes. And uh, it's great for that. Now the uh, that's a regular grinding stone that I use, and that's one of them flex cut wheels. Is after being wore down pretty good. Um, that I got to get a new one. Get a couple new ones. But I've covered them before. Um, there you go. I've made the mistake many a time. There's the part number. Right. Uh, they are extremely good. They don't have a lot of heat and they cut fast. Okay. Uh, these are the cutting wheels that I use. They're maximums. There's the size. They're thin. I buy these in bulk. I just bought two packages of these on sale at Canadian Tire. A pack of 50, I think it was $26. Uh, most places you go and you're buying these discs, you're paying 3 and $4 for them. Up here you are. And I don't justify paying paying that much for them. I pay less than a dollar for these. So I can go through twice as many of these and it don't bother me. I buy them in bulk. I have a lot of them here. And as you can see, there's a rack of them there. There's a big load of them there. Plus what I got over there on the bench. And all the different size wheels that I goes over my little grinding disc rack. Of course, now I got this big old grinder. I've got this some 30 years. And it's a great big 8-inch grinder. It weighs a ton. What is the brand name? Um, Black & Decker. So I've, I've had that, i say, 25 years for sure. And I've uh, never had no issues with it. The cords goes on it every now and again. It has replaced cords on it. Um, I, the only thing about that's dangerous is this switch. Is that when you push on the handle, it locks itself in place. So that will tendency. This is after biting me a few times. Um, it's a bit tricky to uh, take the lock off because it's very easy to lock it in place. <clears throat> These grinders here. This is the one. You see me using a lot of the videos. This one here, a while, well, it was originally this one over here, which only died about um, a month ago. I'll get into that. But this grinder here, I've had this now some eight, nine years, I'd say. It is a really good grinder. Um, I'm thinking it's another Bosch. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. I just look for labels on it. I can't seem to find it. This here is a cheap 
uh, like a $49 grinder. I got this for the grinding stone on it. And you, it's not very good. This one here is, right? It's a nice solid, solid one. Uh, I've got this one here. This was a backup grinder I picked up one day and it's lasting. I'm doing my grinding with it. Uh, but it's uh, on its last legs. So um, I figured uh, it's time for me to step up and get a newer grinder. Uh, I've had these cheaper grinders. Uh, they'll probably work for you uh, in a small shop if you're only doing a little bit. But I've had these last two weeks. I've had them last a day. They're hit and miss on these cheap grinders. Um, it's better to go out and spend a few dollars. These grinders here are $150. Uh, over $100 for sure. This grinder here is like, like I said, I think it's like 39 bucks or something like that. And you know, it's hit or miss. They, they, they don't work. I find the bearings in them are really loose and they makes a lot of noise and whatever. Um, up here, this one here is a Bosch. Uh, I used a lot of work on it. It died. Uh, I think the brushes are gone on it. I hate throwing things out. I, can, I might rebuild this. I don't know. Uh, I'll take it apart. I have another one here that died a good many years ago and I won't throw anything out. So I got one there for parts and I thought it was the switch first but it wasn't. So I said no, playing with that. I had work to do. But uh, that's the extent of it. I usually get about, I can get out of a good grinder, I'll get eight to 10 years out of a good grinder. You know, I do a lot of cutting, cutting and grinding. Uh, what else is there? Oh yes, because this one here is what it is. And this is, and you can tell all this stuff runs on extension cords. Tony's in the 20th century here. I went out and I invested in a new one. Now, this is my first dealings with battery-powered, right? I got a battery-powered drill. Uh, I only got that last year, so I'm not so much into modern 21st century stuff. Uh, I posted this online. Some of you have seen it. Uh, some guys have come in and talked about them. They like them. They don't like them, whatever. And the biggest problem, they say, is these batteries. That's just a regular battery. I'm going to have to get a bigger battery. But for now, I'm going to uh, use this as is. So I can um, get used to it and see what it's all about. Uh, the biggest thing I'm going to do is i got to modify this. So I'm going to go over that in a sec. But I'm hoping... I like where it's cordless. Um, you can stand it up on your bench and you know, work away on it. I don't know how long it's going to last um, with these batteries in it. But I have three or four. I have them plugged in the wall at all times to work on them. So I can uh, get an idea about how good they are so now that i've gone over to the grinders i'm going to go over and show you some modifications now when you're grinding with these cutting with these wheels okay this angle here if you can look down across this here and you're looking at this here that's the worst place you can ever be is looking at that fellas are doing it all the time i don't like doing it i like looking at my grinding wheels this way okay I don't want to be in any direction of where that wheel is through. I see some fellas stand up with a grinder and they got the grinder laid right in front of them like this and they're grinding away, cutting out because they want to look right down south out of the line. Uh, that blade lets go, that's going in this direction. It'll always go in the direction outwards from the wheel itself. So if you're in line with it, you're getting hit with it. And there's no ducking away from or not because when that hits you, you're not going to know it. Because it'll hit you and be and embed it in your skull before you know it. Uh, that's the big thing. Now, I'm left-handed, okay? I hold it in my left hand. This is the advantage of holding it in your left hand because it's on the outside of your body. Like I stand here now, this is my arm, and the grinder's on the outside of your body. If you are right-handed, this is the problem you got. You're, you're holding the grinder, and the grinder's on the inside of your body. Um, it's hard, and you can't work the grinder this way. Because now the grinder is spinning backwards. You could probably do it and cut it this way. Um, you could probably find a technique for doing it. I don't know how right-handed guys do it. I see most of them are using it this way. Uh, I find it scary. Um, so <clears throat> that's one of the advantages why I use it over in my left hand. Because I'm left-handed, of course. But it's a lot easier to control. It's uh, a lot smaller than the factory one. Okay, I still ha I do have the guard on it. Now, I've after making this bigger, so it takes a five inch wheel. This is a four inch one. This is all I has done with them. Here's an old one here, come off motor grinder. All I does is I just cuts them down. Okay, like that there would be like that, like so. 
and you can see how much I cuts off them. Only cuts about three quarters of an inch off either side, or up to an inch, I'd say. Off either end of it. I just I just cuts it from there down across. I'm gonna modify this one here now for you and show you. I cut it across there. I don't like you running this without the guard, and this section of the grinder always gets in the way every time you every time you use it. Right? Because when you go using this grinder, that's like that. So then you gotta rotate the wheel and then you gotta rotate it back. That, this here, I had this guard on this to protect my fingers more than anything else. Um, so I has a cut back, so as you can see, I can cut on an angle from here. So I can cut this grinder like this. You wouldn't be able to do that with the guard the other way. I can almost go vertical with that grinder because of the way I got the guard on it. My hand's protected. Neat how that comes off of him. No button, just turn. Yeah, that's good. So now, as you can see here, here's the two of them. You see what way I got it done. All I'm going to do is cut down here, cut off section here, cut down, cut off section here. Look at me, trusty grinder. That on it's too close to my fingers for my liking. That's about the extent of the piece that I cut out of it. I'll do the same on the other side now. The extension and the modifications are those of the guys. I clean it up there. Well. I've not used this grinder yet or cut any steel, so we're going to install a new blade on it. Give it all the bells. See, it's got a piece of steel here now. This will be my first cut with the new grinder. I've not used this grinder yet, so let's see what it's all about. Hmm. I like that. You can tell it hasn't got the power of the other one, but uh, it's uh, nice. It's really smooth. Feels really nice in the hands. I like the small grip in it. Hold on, right? I'd say the biggest issue I'm going to have with that is the power. I'm going to be losing power on it. But uh, no, it cut that really nice. Now, I've not watched a lot of guys cut with grinders. And uh, one of the biggest things that I find is the way you cut it. I always find that your grinding wheel is spinning forward motion, okay? It's spinning this way. Uh, you should be always cutting in the direction opposite that. So when that's going, you should be walking that along there. I see a lot of guys trying to come backwards and uh, grind into the wet metal with the grinder cutting in. I like just having the grinding wheel hitting it. You would think that cutting it this way, because you're spinning it this way, is going to cut it. But it's nice to have the blade going down into the metal and cutting, then trying to come up out of the metal and cut. Right? And what I mean by that is, <clears throat> when you're cutting your metal like this here, when this is spinning right here, this is spinning downwards. So you're cutting the metal here. Okay. Now, some guys will take this here and try to cut it this way. 
trying to cut back. And I find it's got a tendency to kick on you and whatnot. And it's harder to control. It's harder to see there cutting backwards than it is to see this cutting forward. So, and you don't need to go right down inside your thing. You only need to go down a little small bit in your surface to cut your metal and just take your time. Let the wheel do the cutting. Don't go forcing it. Just let it fall down into it. And when it starts to go, just slowly push it forward. Don't try not to force it because you'll kill your wheels faster. And I got my air grinder. I've had a number of them over the years. I use them with the 24s. And here's the 24 grits. This is what it usually starts with on my big grinder, which is over here. And then I cut them down right here. I cut down different sizes to fit the, the wheel. And this is what I use to cut them down. I use that to cut them down. Uh, I reuse and bring everything down, as you can tell. I start with these and then start cutting them down uh, to fit the grinder. And then, of course, there's backing pads. I usually have backing pads made, or I'll double up on the grinding discs and then to grind them. These here are 24 grit discs. I'm trying to find a supplier for these. Uh, they're not easy to get. These here are hit and miss. Uh, sometimes you get these and they're good and sometimes they're junk, but this is what I've used all these years For any of my metal dressing and I only got into these uh, last few years uh, I've tried uh, flap wheels. I don't like them. I have them there. They're hit and miss really expensive in my mind um, You get nice finishes out of them and I tell everybody they're nice for polishing chrome <laughs> but I do have them there and uh, a lot of people find they like them. Uh, I grew up on these here, and I prefer these over the flap wheels. Uh, I like a sharp edge. I like a cutting, uh, a nice cutting edge on them. Uh, the flap wheels, I find they add a lot of heat, and they burn into the metal a lot. And, you know, they polish it up. Uh, they're nice for finishing off, but uh, when you really got to cut down wells, uh, I find this and this and this to be the best way to cut them down. Anybody got a good connection for these? Uh, leave it in the comment section. Um, I'd like to find a supplier for good quality of these, 3M or something like that. In a 24, I can buy a large section of them and have them just bring them in because they're very hard to find locally. Um, I'm paying, I'd say, $5 each for these, which is nuts. Right? And I'd like to get them a lot cheaper. I really like these. I keep coming back with these all these years. Um, I have abundance the flap wheels here and that's what they are they're just sitting up there about to try in all different styles some are good some are not i i just no it's not me i keep coming back to these i like these more than anything else um why i like these is that i start off with this i put them on my big grinder i do my heavy work on that and this is one here is ready to come off now and i'll take that then and i'll cut that down much the same as this here i'll cut down to that and I'll cut it down to that. And I'll just keep reusing it. And all I do is I just cut it with pure tin snips. And I have usually sometimes I'll double up on them. And I fussy on these ones because the way they're cut. I like these style here better. Um, but the problem you've got with these here. With these type of wheels. See if I can find one here. Just like it. Here you go. I got one here now. This is some of the issues that you'll have with the brands. Uh, the stone comes off them. Some are worse than others. And they wear off very easy on them. And this is the problem I got with them. And then sometimes you get them, and like you see this one here, the stone is staying on it. Right? And all I'm doing is wearing out the edge of it. So that's the difference between two of them. So that, that, that's a good grinding wheel, which is what? Oh, that's one of them clean hard ones. Yeah. So that's the, uh, that's a better one than this one here. And that's usually the problem you got. And it's hit me, you're not going to know until you use it. And you can see how much of the stone is missing off of this one here. So that's it for them. I think I covered there all the bases on them there. Cutting them down and whatnot. Using them on the grinder. Using them on that. Um, I also, on this here, I also use the small stones. That are, that have gotten extremely small from the big ones. Um, I reuse, I use everything down to its limit, right? I have them stones there that are thicker stone. That I use for, you know, for grinding metal and whatever. This here is way better for grinding cheap metal. It would have been nice to have a new one here. But, um... Them flex cuts are amazing. A lot of you tried them and can't uh, can't get over how good they work. I like them. They cut really fast. They don't have a lot of heat to them. Uh, you don't cut them like a grinder like this here. You gotta cut them flat like a disc. 
like these here you can cut these you can grind stuff on the side here uh, these here you keep these flat and grind them this way because once you start putting these on your edge they're only made like a fiber mesh if you want to look at them see this one here is pretty well wore out now but um and it, it just cuts really really nice right and dissipates the heat really well so they are an amazing uh, grinding disc and uh be nice to see if you can get more of them in stock and easier to find because a lot of you guys can't seem to find them but that's them ones last but not least is my little mac tools die grinder i have a couple of good tips uh it's worth your while to uh, buy a good quality tip because they last longer um some of this stuff is uh, a bit costly these mac tools uh the tips and everything but they last a lot longer i bought cheap um cutting wheels and they don't last no time i've had this one here now i'd say 10 years and it's amazing it's great for doing inside edges that's basically all i use it for and when i'm doing wells and doing inside corners i'll use this here to clean it all up and that's the extent of that there so what you see here now is the extent of what i use today i've been 30 years at this and this is where i've got i've come to um you know i got the big grinder for doing the big heavy stuff for grinding off the wells different stones my cutting wheel inside corners cutting finishing off and of course my new addition uh i'm going i'm going to have to uh, use that a lot more and get used to it so it's no good me saying how good it is today because or how bad it is <laughs> i got to use it so i'll get that i'll be using that from here on in now in a lot of videos to get used to it and i'll have my back up here and of course i had i've used this every now and again for cutting small pieces and whatnot but there's the extent of it of what i've been using now for the last 15 17 years i'd say in doing metal fabrication cotton steel uh, you don't need no fancy big tools shears and um you know um some fellas have, have bought the big uh Shear, the big throat shears and uh, I wouldn't mind having a pair but uh, I managed to do everything with this grinder I just uh, got used to it and uh, I find it faster I've said that many many times uh, my edges are cleaner anything anytime I'll call rough cut stuff in and I'll finish shaping it with this you know it's the extent of it so I figured uh, you guys might want to see what I've been using over the last uh, 30 years and what I'm using now. So hope the tips were good and until next time.